Skull Duggery's fingers played over the surface of the box and Stephanie saw his head tilt. He pressed his hands against opposite sides and made subtle rotations until something clicked. There was a noise, like the whirling of motorised parts, and the box opened to reveal a blue gemstone. Ah! Skull Duggery said. Stephanie peered closer. The gem was a little bigger than a golf ball. What? What is it? It's an echo stone, he said. Very rare. Generally, it's used by people who are dying. They sleep with the stone close by for three nights, and in doing so, they imprint it with their memories and personality. It's given to loved ones to help comfort them through their grief or to answer any lingering questions they might have, things like that. How does it work? I'm not entirely sure, he said. I've never seen one up close. He pressed the fingertip to the stone and it immediately started to glow. His head tilted again and he sounded very pleased with himself. Would you look at that? I'm such a genius. You just, you just touched it. Still a genius, Stephanie. She sighed. A moment slipped by and then an old man faded up from nothing before them. Stephanie stepped back. Don't be alarmed. The old man said, smiling. He was wearing a robe and he had kind eyes. I'm not going to hurt you, young lady. I'm here to answer questions and provide whatever information I can to assist you in your... His voice trailed off. He was looking at Skullduggery. My oh my, you're a skeleton? I am. As I live and breathe, taking the of taken, of course, I then neither live nor breathe, but a skeleton and a talking skeleton at that. I am very impressive. Skullduggery said. Who are you? My name is Ocean and I'm here to answer whatever questions you may have. Well, that's good news, because we're looking for a few answers. How did you manage that then? Ocean asked. I'm sorry? Becoming a skeleton, that's a new one on me. Well, it's a long story. Ocean waved his hand. Better not tell me. This stone will only work for a short while before it needs to be charged. I don't have a lot of time to give you the answers you seek. Then we'd better start. Yes, we'd better. Was it painful though, losing your flesh? I don't mean to be rude. Uh, Ocean, but uh, aren't you the one supposed to be answering the questions? Ocean laughed. Not asking them. Oh, I admit, I'm a little too curious for my own good. On the other hand, I do have an in-depth knowledge of the stories of the ancients, so in many ways I'm the ideal candidate. Better suited to this than my colleague, believe me. Before we get started, can I ask what century this is? The 21st. Stephanie said. 21st? He repeated laughing with delight. Oh my, so this is what the future looks like, eh? Kinda gloomy and cluttered. Always thought we'd be brighter, you know? So what's been happening in the world? You, you want us to tell you what's been, what you've missed? Well, not everything, just the high points. What language do I speak, by the way? Stephanie frowned. English. English, eh? Marvellous. I've never spoken English before. How does it sound? Um, uh, fine, I suppose. Does the stone translate what you're saying? Yeah, it does. I could have used something like this in my travels, I'll tell you that much. Could have really impressed the ladies. He started to chuckle, then stopped. Not that I travelled far. Or at all. I don't trust boats, you see. If nature had intended us to travel across water, he would have provided his friends. Could we ask you a question? Skulldoggy, they asked. Again, I don't want to be rude, but if the stone runs out of power before we learn what we need... The old man clapped his hands and rubbed them together. Of course, my boy. Say no more. Ask me your first question. You're an expert on the ancients. Yes, I am. I'm the one in charge with the task of documenting their existence. It's a great honour, even if it does leave me with precious little time to travel. Not that rude. Even if I could. But we need to have options, you know? Yes, anyway, we need to know about the scepter. We need to know its power. Ocean nodded. The sector of the ancients was created to destroy and destroy it does. There is nothing that will not crumble to dust under this cliff. Is there any kind of defence against it? Ocean shook his head. No shield, no spell, no barrier. It can't be stopped and it can't be destroyed. What about its power source? Stephanie asked. A single crystal, a black crystal, embedded in its hull, capable of channeling the energy that's poured into it. And can the crystal be destroyed? Ocean gave a little frown. I thought about this actually. I know more about the sector than anyone else since the time of the ancients, certainly more than any of my colleagues. And where there is no record of a weakness, we have translations of texts that suggest the crystal can be destroyed from within. How? Stephanie asked. Um, I don't really know. Who created the scepter? Skull Duggery asked. Ocean puffed out his chest. The scepter was created by the ancients as a weapon to be used against their gods. For one year they toiled out of sight in the darkness so that the gods could not see what they were creating. His chest deflated and he smiled. That's a direct quote from one of the first texts we found. I found it actually. The others were so jealous. That's probably why they didn't want me to be here to answer, the, to answer your questions. Stephanie frowned. You're not supposed to be here. We had a vote. I voted 
from me. No one else did. They're just jealous. He said I'd waste time, talk too much, so I stole the stone and went away for a few days to imprint it with my consciousness. They can't imprint it, no great, you see. And now, here I am. He beamed. Then his whole body faded, became suddenly transparent, and his beaming smile vanished. Right, time seems to be running out. If you have any more questions. Who created this, this, this scepter, this crystal? Skullduggery really asked quickly. Well, if you'll allow me to quote from the text that I discovered. The Faceless Ones created the crystal, and the crystal signs of the Faceless Ones were name it when an enemy near. But when the ancients approached, the crystal was silent, and it did not sign to the Faceless Ones, and the Faceless Ones did not know it was taken. So their security system has a blind spot? Stephanie asked. It looks that way. Ocean said, nodding. His image grew even fainter and he held up his hand and gazed through it. This is sort of an airman. The scepter has returned. Still Duggery said. Ocean looked up. What? It was uncovered recently, then hidden again. We need to know how to find it. Oh my, Ocean said. If the wrong sort of person takes possession of the scepter, it would be bad, we know, Ocean. How do we find it? The old man vanished for a moment and then flickered back into sight. I don't know, dear boy. Who hid it? My uncle, Stephanie said. He realised it was too powerful for anyone to own. A wise man, it seems. Of course, a truly wise man who returned it to the place he found it, feeling that somewhere, somewhere. Skullduggery straightened. Of course. A smile popped onto Ocean's face. Have I helped you? You have. I know where it is. Thank you, Ocean. Ocean no nodded proudly. I knew you could do this. I knew you could answer questions and not talk too much. That's what I told him. Right for the code of I said, listen, I can... And he vanished. And the echo stone stopped glowing. Stephanie looked at Skullduggery. Well... Gordon followed the example of the last of the ancients and buried the scepter deep within the earth. It's in the caves. What caves? Beneath Gordon's land is a network of, of network of caves and tunnels stretching for miles in each direction. It's a death trap even for the most powerful sorcerer. Why? There are creatures in those caves who feed off magic. It would be the safest place to hide the scepter. I should have thought of it sooner. Beneath Gordon's house, a world of magic and wonder Stephanie never knew was there. Bit by bit, she was seeing how close the magic had been to her when she was growing up. Even only had she, if only she had known where to look, it was such a strange sensation. And but what had Skullduggery told her when they were about to enter the sanctuary? Better get used to that feeling. Skullduggery closed his hand over the puzzle box, and the top slid over, hiding the echo stone once again. <laughs>